This is what we're going to be talking about today. Our big goal is happiness in this life and heaven in the next. To achieve this, we need to stay close to God throughout each day. But how do we do that while living in the real world with all of its challenges and distractions? Growing our interior life through Christian mental prayer is the answer. This podcast mines the riches of the greatest spiritual tradition on earth so we can grow in holiness together. I'm Steve Smith. Thank you for joining me for Pearls of the Interior Life. Welcome to this episode of Pearls of the Interior Life. Thank you, as always, for making this time for the Lord. I am very glad to be here and be a part of that. In this episode of this week, we're going to be looking at kind of letting go of things, especially problems, anxieties, cares, worries, things like that, the things that can uh, kind of drag our attention or off of the Lord. Last week, we were talking about becoming stillness, becoming stillness and that's not just a catchphrase there's a lot to that I, there's an endless amount today you can spend a lifetime reflecting on what that means and, and it means many different things in many different situations mostly it means being exactly who we are supposed to be at the present moment with nothing distracting us from being in communion with the lord it certainly doesn't mean we become just lifeless emotionless robots or cyborgs in a lot of ways it's kind of like a fitbit in your skull with tiny wires Far from it. It means the exact opposite. It means being fully alive. It, look at Christ. Uh, yeah, he 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 wept at Lazarus's tomb. He celebrated at the wedding. He cast out the money changers. He sweat drops of blood in the garden. I mean, the full range of human emotion and engaging with life. That's what we're talking about becoming stillness. Is just that so we're not tossed about and at the mercy of our fallen passions. That's the idea of being stillness. But in this episode, we're going to look at a very specific aspect of it and drill down in terms of being able to quiet ourselves in prayer. Because that's really where the stillness comes from. Remember, our time and mental prayer, that is the core. That's the kernel. That's the seed that grows, you know, the, the mustard plant that it grows and eventually it flows out into all of the rest of our life. So that's where we seek stillness first. And that can be very difficult. Our, our thoughts, our imagination can be very much the enemy in this. And often there's no simple solution, whatever, you know, I, I know that there's many things out there in the the various gurus might have all kinds of things that, that they can say that they can recommend that will quiet our mind, and that may work for a short amount of time. Uh, but usually it doesn't stick. You know, you can look up all of the, the neuroscience Science. and see in there uh, the examples. When we have those new neural pathways that get opened up, when we find something new, that bright, shiny object, you know, those tend to fire hotter at first, but then inevitably it's like starting a new habit. Things tend to fizzle out. Not to say that over time, things like yoga for many people, I'm sure can be a way to enter into peace and enter into quiet, but it's not God's way. It's not his design. There, there are lots of things that we can do that may have an isolated effect, but they're not building relationship. The enemy will allow all sorts of things to work. We can quiet ourselves with, with drugs, medication as well. It doesn't mean that's the right way to do it. God has given us a specific approach, and that's, that's what we want to talk about today. When we're coming into prayer, how do we quiet ourselves to be present with God? Now, here's a current example for me that I alluded to last week, the mobile app for interior life is now well over a year delayed. <laughs> a year, how in heaven's name, and it's as I wrote uh, in the emails, you know, the great ones make it look good, but that uh, very much is weighing on my mind right now. A year is just entirely too long. It's holding many other things up. There are a lot of other things that can't happen until it gets released. I still have a lot of logistics ahead. And it's very easy for that to consume my consciousness, even in prayer. Now, this is a small, trial a small burden by the way this is a fairly trivial example 
especially if, if you've under, undergone the great trials in life, especially um, family issues, health issues, things like that, especially if, if one of our loved ones is suffering. Yeah, those are the big crosses to bear. But we all have these things that can just consume our consciousness, drag us away from being present with God. If I can easily get drawn, we know that voice when we hear it, you know, boy, you should have done this a year ago, you should have done that a year ago. It's how do you know it's not going to be delayed for another year and so on and so forth. How do we quiet that down? In this case, you know, fine, whatever happened in the past, we trust that to God's mercy. Who knows what will happen in the future? We trust that to God's providence. God is here with us in the present, and that's what we want to focus on. How do we keep bringing our attention back to God when these distractions and, and sometimes very genuine burdens and trials and crosses keep wanting to drag us away, drag us away, drag us into the uncertain future, drag us into the painful past? Well, when we have to keep at it is you know, the, the simple answer, the Christian answer is it's not particularly glamorous. It has to do with engaging our will and so that we turn it over to God's will so his grace can become operative. Here's what scripture has to say. In Isaiah, we're told to seek the Lord while he may be found, to call upon him while he is near. Kind of funny wording, while he's near, where he can be found. Well, in the Old Testament, remember, they are always waiting on the Lord to come. They were waiting on the Messiah. So it's a little different viewpoint there. And actually that that um, imagery of, of seeking the Lord's face that's uh, extremely present uh, in the Old Testament, uh, almost countless examples of it, because that is what they were doing. They were waiting, waiting for the Lord to come. It's different for us now because Christ tells us, behold, I am with you always. He is always with us. So we're always able to seek him. We're always able to find him. The issue is us. It's just whether whether we are. And so we have to turn again and again here uh, from first Peter. Cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. We're reminded he's right there, right there. We have to keep bringing our will back. So let's go back to the Old Testament. Here's from First Chronicles. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Seek his face continually. David picks up on this in the Psalm, Psalm 27. Lord, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your face, O Lord, I shall seek. And elsewhere in the Psalms, he says, I constantly seek the Lord's face. My eyes grow weary seeking the Lord. We're being shown something here, much like St. Paul, you know, disciplining himself like, like an athlete, that we have to constantly be turning to the Lord. It, it's not a one-time thing. It's not just some trivial action. I'm going to enter into prayer. Lord, you know, come, draw me to you. We may have to do it again and again during prayer. This is why we started with whistling, because these are things that we we have to find ultimately our own way. Think about whistling. Everyone can whistle. You know how to whistle, don't you, Steve? You just put your lips together and blow. Everyone kind of has to figure it out for themselves, though. <whistles> your mouth and lips aren't shaped like my mouth and lips. Your tongue and teeth aren't positioned like mine. You can show someone, usually a child, the basics, and you pucker your lips and blow, but you have to play around with it. You have to get your own positioning of things, set of things. You know, what's the right amount of air pressure just to get that little bit of flutter or turbulence so you get vibration going, you get audible sound. It, there's too much nuance to it, too much that is tied into our own particular nature and circumstances. It's not like, say, just teaching someone how to write the letter A, very mechanical. This is A, this is what it looks like. That's it, you just copy it, you're done. Your way of learning to whistle, how it's going to feel for you, how you're gonna experience it and come about it is gonna be different than for me or for anyone else. So too, in 
learning to quiet ourselves in prayer. How do we turn things over to God? There's many different approaches that people can take. Uh, in the 30 days of Christian meditation, we look at quite a few of them. One of them from St. Bernard is he envisions himself ascending a mountaintop and he leaves all of his worries at the base, all of his cares, all of his responsibilities, knowing they're gonna be there, they're not gonna go anywhere. And he's gonna go spend time without those, unburdened with the Lord. I tend to envision myself placing my cares, my worries, my burdens at the foot of the cross. And there Christ is on the cross. It, it, it's a great way to grow in humility. I, he is Christ crucified. And then despite that, here I come and I burden him more. But that is exactly what he did. He took all of that on to begin with. And so for me, that also helps adding to that humility. But it's not a one-time thing. It's generally not a one-time thing just in, in prayer session. It may have to be again and again. This is where we seek constantly. This is what David is telling us. We never tire of seeking the Lord's face. And the second these cares come back up again and we're getting drawn away by them, these distractions, we turn back, come back to the Lord. And it will play out different in different ways for each person and over time there's sometimes and, and you may well have experienced uh, this range of things sometimes that grace is given that consolation is there that just that that burden is lifted it, it just goes our mind no longer wanders back to wherever that distraction is wonderful praise god it's you know, this little little forever graces he gives us to remind us that he really is right there ready to take on our anxieties. Other times, not so much. Uh, these days, more and more, I find that distinction coming in. St. Francis would refer to his his body as brother ass, and it's really not you know, a duality. It's just recognizing our fallen nature that has to be subdued, that can be very unruly. And more and more, when those voices are coming up, well, how do you know you're not going to have more problems? Why didn't you do this or that in the past? It, it, it doesn't disturb me. Okay, yes, fine. You know, we know that voice. That voice can come from a number of places. It can come, you know, just from ourself, our own fallen nature. Sometimes it is the voice of the enemy, too, trying to work through that and disturb our peace, our time with the Lord. But uh, more and more, over time, and this is where I say you know, it's different for everybody. Everyone has to find their own way of whistling. Uh, for me, it's come to the point where those voices, they, they don't disturb me when they come. And it's like saying Paul with the thorn in his side. Yep, you know, I'm still gonna have in certain circumstances, those, those distractions, those recurring annoyances that come back but it doesn't disturb the peace. You just bat them down when they come. You know, it's fine. I'm not gonna get bound up around the axle, rethinking the past. I'm not gonna get drawn in the future. I'm not gonna start questioning things. God and I have other things that we're gonna talk about. If God wants to talk about the mobile app, he'll bring my attention back to it, that I'm sure of. But otherwise, I'm just gonna keep bringing my attention back to the Lord. And what is, again, happened over time is, at the deeper level, there's just peace. There is stillness. Yes, there may be that chatter, but eventually that, that dies down because it doesn't get fed. With that, if you encounter these challenges, as just about everybody does, of having you know, particular recurring challenges, worries, concerns, anxieties, disturbances, distractions, simply to stay with it, just like learning to whistle until you push your way through because God is allowing you, he's permitting this as an exercise for you to grow in faith, to grow in trust, to grow in generosity. And the fulfillment of that, the glory of that will come, will come. Often it comes slowly over time and suddenly you'll realize, yeah, you know, these pesky things keep coming up, but, but they're not disturbing me like they were. It's almost just, you know, this little noise in the background, pesky voice, and eventually it dies out. But have that faith of trying your own way of, of sticking with it. And you'll probably have to vary things if, if this is something that you're still wrestling with. 
vary your approaches over time till you find the one that works best for your relationship with God, always with that great confidence that you will get there. You will be whistling while you work quite happily. So with that, as always, I wish you a wonderful week ahead, and I look forward to being with you again.